Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, December 9th, 2023. Let's get into it. Man, I'm going to tell you, this might be a long video. <laughs> Hold on to your jack straps because there's just way too much. Good Lord, I take a day off because uh, I, I don't know, I was just burnt out, man. After working in the rock, I had to take a barrier back to Home Depot. You know, I'm just like you, man. I, I, I'm just one dude. So anyway, the the news of the day for me was the Tucker Carson Alex Jones interview. Now, if you don't know who Alex Jones is, he is the most censored man on the planet uh, next to Julian Assange. By the way, free Julian Assange. I, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm hoping that uh, when Trump gets in there, uh, that he will free Julian Assange. Uh, he's a crippled old man now, and they've, they've basically destroyed him. Because uh, they wanted to make reporters around the world scared to report the news. And if you ever want to go back, he published some classified documents on uh, what was taking place in Iraq, uh, U.S. war crimes. And, uh, man, they they took him to the cleaners. Uh, Edward Snowden, of course, came out later, and he he made it to Hong Kong. And then, of course, he got trapped in Russia. He wasn't planning to stay there. He was going to Ecuador, and they revoked his... Uh, his passport, so he got stuck in Russia. But it turned out, I think it worked out well for him. Russia's doing extremely well. I imagine he's making a good living there. So I'm happy for Edward Snowden, and he's married now, if you didn't know. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we get, let's just get into the interview for just a second. Uh, the first piece of the interview was what was amazing was I didn't realize that Alex Jones actually predicted 9-11. Uh, and he asked uh, the people that watched his show way back then, he said, call into the White House and tell them to stop the attack on the uh, Twin Towers. And Tucker showed the video and verified that he, Alex Jones put that video out before 9-11, so he knew it was going to happen. Uh, now, he, he didn't say, you know, he had inside sources or anything. He said he just deduced it from all of the, uh, I, I guess he's just this massive metadata you know type of person where he just goes out and just gathers all kinds of stuff that you and i wouldn't look at and then he was reporting on it and uh and he, he did he told people he said call the white house tell them not to allow the destruction of the twin towers and uh and then it happened so whatever you want to say about alex jones he was spot on and if you watch the interview tucker you know because everybody he got discredited you know the sandy hill thing and all of that, and everybody thought, you know, that Alex Jones was this conspiracy theory, but so many things that he's predicted have come true. And even Tucker was on the interview just going like, you know, I would have thought these things were were not possible, but I'm agreeing with you now. <laughs> it was, it's a wild interview, but let's just talk about a couple of things that came out in the interview. So I uh, now Alex Jones claims that Biden walks around the White House at night nude, <laughs> and this is a real problem and sometimes he comes out the back door into the garden and uh with no clothes on and you know so they're having a hard time uh, keeping that under control uh and tucker uh verified this one they said that biden is on drugs they give him amphetamine when uh you know because they got to spruce him up uh whenever he's going to appear in front of the cameras or anything like that uh and and tucker said yeah i know he says i've had somebody tell me that and, uh, of course, he couldn't say who, an inside source. So there you go. So so Biden is on drugs. Uh, then, of course, they went into the globalist plan to depopulate the planet and the, uh, well, the Democrat destruction of the United States. And I say Democrat. They didn't put that in there, but they just said the globalist destruction of the United States. But the Democrats are in on the whole thing. Uh, we do have a few Republicans that are trying to fight against it. So, uh, and then... Uh, the one that I knew for sure, because I agreed with this, was he talked about uh, Hezbollah um, and and that right now, because of the open borders, uh, we've probably got tons and tons of, uh, well, possibly Hamas, but mostly Hezbollah terrorists that are in the United States sleeper cells, uh, that if the United States attacks Iran, that they're going to get activated. Boy, we're going to have death and destruction. And, and this is by... According to Alex Jones, I mean, if you want to believe him, and I believe him, I, I, I can't see any other way this could come about, because why would the Democrats allow, you know, millions of people to pour into the United States unless they wanted this? So what he was saying was that once these terrorist cells are activated and, and all of this chaos, 
they're going to declare martial law and they're going to take away our um, our individual rights, possibly the Second Amendment, uh, possibly uh, freedom of religion. Uh, they're whittling away at it. And, and that was why he said they allowed 9-11 to take place was because, think about it, Bush, you know, Bush is, was a Repub supposedly a Republican. I call him a rhino. They had the Patriot Act in their p back pocket. They were ready to pass that. Remember right after 9-11? And that took away a hell of a lot of our freedom. And it gave the government the right to spy on the United States people in, in massive forms, which Edward Snowden came out and showed us later. I don't think anybody knew what was in that Patriot Act until Edward Snowden came out and revealed everything. And uh, so now we know. Now we know what they're doing. So as soon as these terror cells uh, hit, at, hit the United States, expect your freedoms to get curtailed even more. And, of course, they talked about uh, the COVID uh, restriction of freedom and, and why that took place and the, the, the forced wearing of masks and the forced uh, mandates for the shots. Uh, yeah, was, I mean, definitely watch the inter interview. And uh, so that'll be... And then the, the, the last one that was interesting, because I was wondering what they're going to do with all these illegal aliens. And uh, according to Alex Jones now, I mean, uh, and, and uh, Tucker's agreeing with him, you know, he said they're going to train up all these uh, illegal aliens to hate the United States, or really hate rural America. And they're going to blame everything that's bad in, in the cities, I mean, in, not in, in the cities, and in the illegal alien camps on rural America, and, and so there's going to be a conflict. Uh, so if you live in rural America and you're white, uh, they're coming for you. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So going out into to, to buy your farm and, and have your own chickens and your own uh, vegetable garden ain't going to save you because they're still going to come for you. So we what he was pointing out is that we've still got He's still living in Austin, Texas, and he said Austin, Texas has become a, a shithole just like San Francisco uh, not to the extent that San Francisco is, but all the people from California moved in and brought their liberal ideas and everything. And he said, the city's turning to hell. Uh, and he said, we've, you know, if to go live in the country is just, is not going to get you away from it. You're going to have to fight in the cities as well, especially if you live in the country and work in the city. So, uh, Oh, yeah, then we got uh, Austin says Americans will have to go fight Russians. Uh, not only Austin, uh, Biden. Let's, uh, well, let's watch the video from Biden right now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to speak to you today about an urgent responsibility the Congress has to uphold the national security needs of the United States and, quite frankly, of our partners as well. <clears throat> this cannot wait. Congress needs to pass supplemental funding for Ukraine before they break for the holiday resources. Simple as that. Frankly, I think it's stunning that we've gotten to this point in the first place. If Putin takes Ukraine, he won't stop there. It's important to see the long run here. He's going to keep going. He's made that pretty clear. If Putin attacks a NATO ally, if he keeps going, and then he attacks a NATO ally, or we've committed as a NATO member, that we defend every inch of NATO territory. Then we'll have something that we don't seek and that we don't have today. American troops fighting Russian troops. Well, that was Biden on uh, we're going to be sending American troops because of the old, uh, remember the old theory that if we didn't take on Russia and Vietnam, that they were going to move on to conquer the, the Soviet Union back then, was going to conquer the, the domino theory, yeah, they, they were going to conquer the rest of the world, oh my god, that's just freaking, what a ridiculous thing, I think I got another video on that, let's watch another video about them talking about uh, the domino theory. Russia to fight Putin, if you miss that like blackmailing piece of this, I want to make sure and replay it here, take a listen. Well, we've committed as a NATO member that we defend every inch of NATO territory. Then we'll have something that we don't seek and that we don't have today. American troops fighting Russian troops. American troops fighting Russian troops if he moves into other parts of NATO. Yeah. So you better send money because he's going. But the point, the message here is he's going to invade. All right. So there's that video. All right. Let's see, what else we got? Uh, well, here, here's another video. <laughs> so you got Austin coming out and saying it. See how they reinforce everything? You get Biden saying it, and you get Austin saying it, and now here's Blinken. 
Make no mistake, Selena. He hasn't given up his strategic goal of subjugating the entire country. He doesn't believe it ought to exist as a sovereign state. And so we can't support Ukraine. Their chief advisor yesterday said they're likely to lose this war if they lose U.S. support. And Putin gets all of Ukraine, then what? Then where does he go? Because right then, he's up against the eastern flank of NATO. And if you think the cost of supporting Ukraine is high now, just imagine how much higher it's going to be. Not just in national treasure, but in American blood. If he starts going after one of our NATO allies, because as the president also said, we take our Article 5 commitments very seriously. And what we've had over the last two years is a, Ukraine, a Ukrainian military actually clawing back territory and pushing back Russian aggression without any foreign uh, boots on the ground, including no American boots. Uh, American boots would very much have to be involved if Mr. Putin is let to uh, have this uh, strategic victory in Ukraine and then perhaps goes after one of our NATO allies. So don't send... Blinken, Blinken, won't you look me in the eye? I love that song. I... But uh, anyway, so that's Blinken saying the same thing, that if uh, we don't go fight Russia and Ukraine with American blood, uh, they'll definitely uh, roll right down into the Bauklicks, uh, probably show up in London. Uh, and even though Putin keeps telling the whole world, saying, no, we're not, <laughs> we have no imperial ambitions other than to protect the Russian territories of Ukraine that, that, that should have been protected in the Minsk agreements to begin with. If you're not familiar with that, there's plenty of videos about it. So uh, let's move on to, um, to Gaza. Uh, we got, uh, well, I was wondering, you know, why the Congress is so reluctant to give the money to Ukraine. And I'm not sure if this is the right number, but I think it, they said that we're funding Israel right now at $300 million a day for, the, for their bombing or the extermination. And that's what it is. It's the extermination of uh, the Palestinians. And I want to I want to talk about the, the extermination of the Palestinians here in just just a few, and uh, we'll get into that. Well, let's watch a quick uh, quick video on that. So this is uh, Article ninety nine of the UN Charter has been invoked. Uh, let's just watch two seconds of that. In Gaza, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres laid out the desperate situation in a letter where he invoked the rarely used Article ninety nine of the United Nations Charter. More than eight weeks of hostilities in Gaza and Israel have created appalling human suffering, physical destruction, and collective trauma across Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory. There is no effective protection of civilians. The healthcare system in Gaza is collapsing. Hospitals have turned into battlegrounds amid constant bombardment by the Israeli Defense Forces and without shelter or the essentials to survive. I expect public order to completely break down soon due to the desperate conditions, rendering even limited humanitarian assistance impossible. An even worse situation could unfold, including epidemic diseases and increased pressure for mass displacement into neighboring countries. Well, Article 99 of the UN Charter allows the Secretary General to call a meeting of the Security Council uh, on its own initiative, to specifically issue warnings about threats to international peace and security. And a sign of just how serious the UN considers the crisis, the article has not been invoked for over 60 years. So that's it. And guess who uh, voted against it? The sole person, the sole country that voted against it, the United States. You know, it's not looking real good for the United States. There was a, and Todd, Todd Starnes, I'm listening to him on the radio today, and you, you get it from Mark Levin or Sean Hannity or any of the right-wing hosts, and, uh, and I thought this was absolutely horrible. There was a, um, a, a Muslim restaurant that uh, is in a museum. I couldn't tell you where it was. It was somewhere up north. And, uh, and they were holding a fundraiser for Palestinian humanitarian aid. And Todd Starnes thought that was absolutely, that's anti-Semitism, that's anti-Semitism. And so he had his followers call in, and then of course the, the, um, the, the uh, what are they called, the IDF, whatever the Israeli uh, lobby and organization, um, they, uh, they basically told the museum, you're not getting your $100 million in, in contributions unless uh, this, uh, this restaurant is closed down and, and, you know, put out of business. So the restaurant was put out of business by Todd Stearns and the right wings. Now, you might say, well, okay, having a, a, a fundraiser for Palestinian humanitarian aid, uh, you know, in the light of the, of the situation that took place on October 7th, I mean, you can take your position however you want, but 
they considered that hate speech. Hate speech. Well, you know what? Hate speech is on the left and hate speech is on the right. And depending on which side you are, I don't agree with canceling anybody. I don't think this restaurant should have been put out of business for this. If they wanted to tell them, you know what, we don't want you to have any more uh, Palestinian fundraisers, then fine. You didn't need to put the business out of business. And, and Todd Stearns was all for it. Oh, yeah, we need to have, we've taught them a lesson. That you put this whole restaurant right out of business just because they were holding a fundraiser for the Palestinians. I, 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 don't, I, I don't like it. I, don't, I think it's wrong. I'm, a, I'm against cancel culture of any shape, whether it's on the left or the right, because the left wants to cancel me. Because I'm considered a right-wing lunatic. I'm a right-wing lunatic. And here I am defending the left. What the hell's wrong with me, huh? And then, of course, we've got the, uh, the leader. I want to say the leader. I guess the deans of the University of Pennsylvania, Harvard. And I can't remember the third university. They Remember, they, 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 it's been on the radio. They went up before Congress and they gave a... And they kept trying to pin them down because I guess some of the college students are staying what they consider hate speech, anti-Semitic uh, speech. And so the, the, the college professors were saying, no, we, we're for free speech. Okay, now, would they have said this if it was conservatives on campus saying something against the left? Probably not. Probably not. They wouldn't have defended free speech on that side, but they were defending it from the left side. So what would have been wonderful is if you defended free speech from the left and then the next time they, they you know, a, a conservative comes on campus and says something that offends everybody, then they'd have to say, well, you defended the Palestinian, uh, the anti-Semitic hate speech, so why can't you defend the conservatives? But no, no, they're trying to get these people fired and I think some of the uh, Israeli donors or um, uh, the IDF donors, let's say, uh, are, are pulling their funding and want these uh, deans fired from these colleges. Once again, cancel culture. Suppose it had been, you know, uh, uh, a conservative uh, dean on the, on the campus that said something wrong the other way, then they want them fired. You see how this goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? You know, free speech is free speech. Okay, if the, if the students want to say anti-Semitic stuff or what's considered, I mean, what do you consider anti-Semitic? What do you consider hate speech? Because hate speech to me, you know, because you know, if you call somebody him or her or, uh, you know, call me asshole, you know, I'm like, oh, that's hate speech, man. I, I use the wrong pronoun, right? I use the wrong pronoun. Well, guess what? I mean, you know, how far do you want to go with this whole hate speech thing? I, I don't know. So I, 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 Todd Stearns, you know, you, I love you. I listen to you on the radio, but you, you're on the wrong side of this. And, and, and so is Sean Hannity. So is Mark Levin. Uh, I, I haven't listened to Dana Lash because he's been moved to a different time slot than, than when I'm out hiking. And that's when I mostly listen. Yeah, March 17th, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, he's going to run for uh, president of, of uh, Russia again. Now, everybody, a lot of people don't understand Russia. Russia is a democracy. Putin can get voted out. I mean, he's not, you know, he's not one of these dictators that comes in there and they rubber stamp him into office. No, he has to actually, well, right now he's got 80% of the people on his side, but if something happens and something goes wrong, he could get voted out. Okay, and so that's what a democracy is all about. So, but he, you know, he, he decided, and he didn't do like, uh, guess what, Ukraine. Ukraine closed down their elections. Is that a democracy? Because uh, Zelensky didn't want to run against Zeluzhny. Uh, so he just said, no, we're not going to even have elections in Ukraine. But yet, the United States is going to give them $60 billion. Yeah, you warmongering Democrats. You warmongering Democrats. I don't know what the hell. Why does the Democrats want to destroy the entire world? You know, not just the United States. They want uh, three, 400 bombs dropped on uh, Gaza, uh, exterminating the Gazans. Um, all right, so let's keep going uh, by the way, Israel is, uh, is using incendiary rounds. That's against the Geneva Convention. So they're burning the Gazans alive. They're not just killing them by dropping 400 bombs on Gaza. They're burning them to death with incendiary rounds. It's an extermination. And let's just use the word, it's a genocide. And anybody that's for this is on the wrong side of history. And where are the nations? Where, uh, well, I mean, you got the United Nations. You know, Article 99, you saw that video. It was been invoked. Uh, but guess who's standing in the way? The United States. The United States is the only nation in the world standing against 
a ceasefire, and the exterminations of the Palestinians. So what are, we, what are you going to do when there's not a single Palestinian left on the planet? You'll probably celebrate, right? If you're a Democrat, you're probably going to go out and go find some dead Palestinian bodies and drink the blood, right? Is that what you're going to do? Probably so. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, Robotine uh, has been entered by the Russians in the uh, Ukraine war. Uh, I don't know if you follow along. That's That was... A, big battle that the, the Ukrainians came in that was part of their counteroffensive and then uh, they actually took some territory there and they've been battling back and forth but it looks like Russia is going to push them out and of course the fight is all along the front lines. Uh, one person did point out that you know you do realize that only about 15 percent of the Russian uh, military forces are fighting in Ukraine. So what do you think they're getting prepared for? I guess they're getting prepared for General Austin sending U.S. troops and NATO to come into the conflict because then they can commit the other, you know, 85% of their forces to fight NATO head on. No longer a proxy war. We're going to fight them head on. We'll see where that goes. If I have the feeling the nukes are going to start flying, you freaking warmongering Democrat fools, make peace. So, uh, and then, of course, um, I can't think of it. Oh, yeah, one last thing was uh, Megyn Kelly. Well, this, this is, yeah, this is my last page. Uh, so Putin, let's see. We got the Biden annihilation of Palestinian people, total extermination, poisoning. Oh, yeah, they're going to pump salt water into the uh, aquifers of Gaza. So they're going to they're gonna basically poison the water. So even if the Palestinians wanted to live in Gaza, whatever's left of them after they've been exterminated, uh, they, they're not going to be able to live there. So where are they going to go? I don't know. Uh, it's terrible. Uh, and, and of course, a person today called Bibi Netanyahu, the Führer, the Führer. That's who Bibi Netanyahu is. I don't think many people understand that. He's got a, he rules Israel with an iron thumb, and he has for many years. Uh, yeah, Hunter Biden's up on multiple tax felony charges, I guess, in California. I'm sure that's not going to go nowhere. Uh, and then uh, Megyn Kelly, I thought this was interesting. She says that Trump is slipping, and she gave a couple of examples because he's called o Biden Obama. And I've heard him call him O'Biden. Maybe he was trying to cover up the fact that he called him Obama. So she says that at 77 years old, maybe his mind's slipping. I don't, I don't know. I, 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 got, I put nothing to that, but I like Megyn Kelly. I know that she's a good reporter. So for her to say that. Uh, yeah, the other thing was, uh, oh, God, here's another video. I forgot about this. This is a Gaza refugee camp uh, in the extermination of the Gazans that was destroyed. <laughs> So there you go. There you go. Uh, well, that's it. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.